At midnight, then, I have to ask you to be alone in your consulting room, to admit with your own hand into the house a man who will present himself in my name, and to place in his hands the drawer that you will have brought with you from my cabinet. Confident as I am that you will not trifle with this appeal, my heart sinks and my hand trembles with the bare thought of such a possibility. Think of me at this hour in a strange place, laboring under a blackness of distress that no fancy can exaggerate, and yet well aware that, if you will but punctually serve me, my troubles will roll away like a story that is told. Serve me, my dear Lanyon, and save your friend, Henry Jekyll. Twelve o'clock had scarce rung out over London, ere the knocker sounded very gently on the door. I went myself at the summons and found a small man crouching against the pillars of the portugal. Are you come from Dr. Jekyll? I asked. He told me yes, by a constrained gesture, and when I had bidden him enter, he did not obey me without a searching backward glance into the darkness of the square. Have you got it? he cried. Have you got it? There it is, said I pointing to the drawer where it lay on the floor behind a table and still covered with the sheet. He sprang to it, and then paused, and laid his hand upon his heart. I could hear his teeth grate with the conclusive action of his jaws, and his face was so ghastly to see that I grew alarmed both for his life and reason. Compose yourself, said I. He turned a dreadful smile to me. and as if the decision of despair plucked away the sheet. At sight of the contents, he uttered one loud sob of such immense relief that I sat petrified. And at the next moment, in a voice that was already fairly well under control, have you a graduated class? he asked. He thanked me with a smiling nod, measured out a few minims of the red tincture. And added one of the powders. The mixture was at first a reddish hue, began in proportion as the crystals melted to brighten in color, to effervesce audibly, and to throw off small fumes of vapor. Suddenly, at the same moment of the evolution ceased, and the compound changed to a dark purple. Which faded again more slowly to a watery green. He put the glass to his lips and drank at one gulp. A cry followed. He reeled, staggered, clutched at the table, and held on, staring with injected eyes, gasping with open mouth. And the next moment, I had sprung to my feet and leaped against the wall. My arm raised to shield me from the prodigy, for there before my eyes, pale and shaken and half fainting and groping before him, with his hands like a man restored from death, there stood Henry Jekyll.